Hello everyone, welcome uh, to Wind Down Friday. And uh, today, today our guest is uh, Ronald Mallet, uh, Professor Emeritus of Physics at the University of uh, Connecticut. Hi Ronald, how are you? Welcome, welcome board. Thank you, it's good to see you. Yeah, good, good to see you. So uh, where are you located? I'm located in uh, Connecticut in the US, that's on the East Coast. Uh, near Hartford, Connecticut, not far from the capital of Connecticut, but specifically at Storrs, Connecticut, is the university uh, that I'm associated with, the University of Connecticut. So, as a, a theoretical physicist, you are specialized in uh, Einstein's general theory, theory of relativity, and uh, uh, you are uh, focused on black holes, Big Bang theory, and time travel. So, how important is the time for you during your day? <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, is that I actually feel very privileged to be able to study Einstein's general theory of relativity because it encompasses everything. Uh, you know, he was responsible for the beginning of quantum theory all the way to modern cosmology, black holes and everything in between. So, mm -hmm. um, and of course, his uh, theory of uh, general relativity involves time travel, which has a very personal connection with me, which I'll tell you about, you know, later on. But uh, uh, right now, what I'm doing is I'm uh, not teaching actively anymore. That's why it's Professor Emeritus, but I am still engaged in my research and giving talks, and um, you know, which is satisfying for me because I still have yeah. a chance to connect with people and connect with my work. So during your career, during your uh, university period at university, which were your favorite subjects? Maybe physics for sure. So, well, but tell me, you may tell us uh, uh, particular events that you remember well with your friends, professor, during some uh, physics experiments that you remember well, and uh, which is also the biggest challenges that you have faced during your career and how did you overcome it and what did you learn from it? Sure. Well, the thing is for me, I the subjects that I took as a student at Penn State, that's where I uh, got my bachelor's, master's, and PhD was Penn State University, mm -hmm. uh, are pretty much the same subjects that I love teaching. In fact, uh, one of the main ones is classical electrodynamics, okay, Maxwell's equations. I mean, that fascinated even me as a child. Uh, I can remember thinking about the fact that, you know, you don't see these radio waves, but yet something up is showing up, you know, in your set. And that to me was a miracle, you know? And so classical electrodynamics, quantum mechanics. In fact, quantum mechanics, a lot of people think that it was relativity that inspired me to go into physics. It actually mm. was quantum mechanics. Um, that was, uh, in fact, I've written a biography, by the way, that's called uh, Time Travel, A Scientist's Personal Mission to Time Travel, A Reality. And one of the things that I talk about was the fact that it was uh, when I was, um, in the military, I didn't, we were too poor for me to go to college. So I went into the military in the U.S. and I, I used something in the U.S. that's called the GI Bill that allowed me to go to college afterwards. But while I was in the uh, military uh, studying computers, they, they talked about this wonderful equation called the Schrodinger equation. And they didn't, you know, go into detail because it was the, too technical. But they they said that these, there were these particles called electrons, which I always thought about as being things that bounced you know, around in a vacuum tube, they said, no, they could be part, of, they could be waves, and these waves could penetrate things without breaking. I said, oh, this is amazing. So I actually fell in love with wanting to know the Schrodinger equation and everything. So quantum mechanics was the next subject, and then general relativity, of course, you know, uh, and I, I would say mathematical methods of physics. Those were the things that I, I really loved understanding the mathematical techniques themselves. And so when I got to uh, the University of Connecticut, those were the courses that I loved wanting to teach most, was electro, classical electrodynamics, quantum mechanics, general relativity, and mathematical methods. Uh, the thing is, is as, a, as a theoretical physicist, I was not involved with experiments. I mean, in fact, I loved looking at what people were doing with experiments, but my work was all, you know, theoretical. Uh, so that there's no experiment that you might say stands out in my mind. In fact, as I said, the, the little antidote I mentioned about a Schrodinger equation is the one thing that really sticks in my mind, how just amazing quantum mechanics is, just how extremely mm -hmm. fascinating for me, it's, it's as fascinating as relativity. You know, so um, yeah. now as far as, uh, 
you know, my colleagues were concerned, uh, they were, I was really uh, lucky, both as my teachers at Penn State and uh, eventually at uh, University of Connecticut. Now, the thing is, my mentor at uh, Penn State was my thesis advisor, Gordon Fleming. And his work was what I tried to generalize. He had, was looking at um, these things are they're called position operators in quantum mechanics, you know. And the thing is, is that he looked at him the standpoint of uh, special relativity. And my thesis was to I wanted to look at those th same operators from the standpoint of general relativity. So mm -hmm. that's actually what my thesis was about. It was looking at uh, quantum mechanical operators in a de Sitter space. A de Sitter space is a particular expanding universe, by the way. And that's yeah. what my thesis was. So my mentor, as far as the University of Connecticut was concerned, that happened more my sabbatical. And I was really, really a wonderful experience for me. Is John Wheeler. A lot of physicists would know his name automatically. John Wheeler was just the person who coined black holes. And in fact, he worked uh, with Niels Bohr on a particular model of the nucleus um, you know, back in the 30s. So I was, and at that time, he had a position as emeritus at Penn, at uh, Princeton, and he had a, a regular position. He was the director for the Center of Relativity at um, the University of Texas in Austin. And so I, on well, my first sabbatical, I was able to spend a year uh, mm -hmm. in his center, and he was just a wonderful person. So th as far as, as inspiration as it, in terms of physicists, was my thesis advisor, Gordon Fleming and uh, John Wheeler, the great John Wheeler. Now, as far as uh, personal, it, that was my father. My father was was my personal inspiration. He was the end all and be all. Einstein was my other. You know, I say, who were the great men in my life that, mm -hmm. I, that, that uh, set the foundation for me? One was my father, of course, and the other was... Um, Einstein. I never met Einstein, but Einstein, uh, he gave me reason to hope that the research that I was doing in time travel had some sort of a validity, some sort of a foundation. And uh, those are those that's so that pretty much is the inspirations in my life. Good. Fantastic. So now we are living in a, in a particular period where there are a lot of technologies, AI, quantum technology. Uh, so do you think that uh, one day AI, quantum could help help to solve equations that now are complicated for computer today? This is in general, not only for your right. research for time travel, but also in general. One day we should reach just the, um, we could solve the time travel issues and also other technologies. Uh, pro issues thanks to AI and quantum technologies? Well, you know, AI is just sort of an evolution of quantum technology, just bringing in uh, a higher level of that. And of course, mm -hmm. we see already what computers have been able to do to get us to the moon and everything like that. We have to be quite careful, though. Yes, it will be able to support us. But, you know, one of the things is, is asking the right questions as well as, you know, trying to get the right answers. And, yeah. and that's sometimes, I don't think AI is going to tell us, well, this is the right questions, okay? Um, so we have to be careful. Yeah, I think that it will be, yes, it will be an extremely important tool for helping us. But I think also we have to be careful not to depend on it too much because a lot of the techniques that one has, I mean, one could have an inspiration for how it might solve a, a particular nonlinear differential equation, really a solid way. But then it would be too complicated. But then they could use, uh, you know, the computer to, to to see whether that technique of theirs is going to work. So it's a balance. Yes, it will help, but it will never replace. That's my okay. own opinion. Okay, good. So apart of that, which are your hobbies? Maybe watching uh, science fiction uh, films. So which could uh, represent better the time yeah, travel sure. from your? Yeah, well, sometimes people are surprised that my my actually one of my favorite is playing computer games. Mm -hmm. I'm really into computer games. <laughs> In fact, I'm into a, a game right now that I've played before, which I really is fantastic. It's called Witcher, which is a very very popular game. Okay, a uh, very popular. In fact, now it's on Netflix as a popular TV show. Mm -hmm. But that's one of my favorite games. So that's one of my hobbies. Uh, the other one is is I uh, is reading. You know, I, I love to read, and I especially love biographies. I mean, that's another time. I mean, and it, it's not just the biographies of scientists. In fact, 
I love reading biographies of, of people who have just made an impression on the world, whether they were composers, uh, whether they were, you know, journalists, uh, whether they were politicians, scientists. Which was you know. the last one? Okay. Well, the, the most recent one that I'm still in is uh, one called Too Big for a Single Mind. And what it's about is, it's, in fact, is the title, it's, it's about quantum mechanics. And what it does is it talks about, unlike relativity, really, which one mm -hmm. could say Einstein made the greatest you know, impact. Quantum mechanics, that's not so. Quantum mechanics was something that was a number of physicists, important physicists that involved the younger generation with people like uh, Max Planck and Niels Bohr and Einstein, but then an older generation, which involved people like Heisenberg, uh, Pauli, uh, Schrodinger, you know, these, these, and Dirac, of course. So yeah, this, book is, this Dirac. book is about, right, this book is about the fact that that quantum mechanics was something that came into being because of all of these contributions. That's the most recent one that I've been reading. Yeah, all of these physicists are the story of quantum. Exactly, exactly. And as I Good. said, it's, it's still evolving, it's, you know, even mm. though a lot of people think that, you know, we reached, <laughs> that's part of the problem is the fact that theory and experiment go back and forth, you know, mm. and we have what's known as the standard model, which unifies uh, the uh, electroweak force and also brings in the strong force, but mm. we don't have a theory that is really unifying in the sense that it brings in general relativity in a consistent way. We have attempts at it, but we still have not really gotten to that prize of really melding the two together. So Ronald, last one before our conclusion. So what's next from uh, your point of view, next holidays, next projects, next reading, Maybe with the good wine. <laughs> yes. Well, one of the things I should mention is the fact that that one of the, I'm still working on uh, my personal work. As I said, it has to do with uh, looking at time travel. And my main breakthrough was looking at the fact that light in Einstein's theory can create gravity, and in Einstein's theory, gravity can affect time. So my breakthrough was to realize that light, especially laser light in a circulating laser beam, can yeah. affect time. So I'm continuing that particular research. Uh, but as far as uh, what, what vacation, I work, I combine them. I'm, right now, I'm in a very exciting phase. I've been invited to give a talk at uh, University of Nevada in Reno about the time travel. And I'll be giving a talk in uh, DePaul University in Chicago. This is all in May. And then I've been asked to give a talk in, uh, in June in England. So I combine, you might say, I take many vacations with uh, you know, the important person in my life, and we take the time out to do that. So those are the things for me, it's still always kind of work, um, pleasure type of thing. When my work for me is my pleasure. Good. Oh, incidentally, once again, if people would like to learn more, I do would, would recommend my book, Time Traveler, the scientist's personal mission to make time travel a reality. Absolutely. Good. Thank you, Rod. Thanks a lot for uh, uh, joining us at Wind Down. Thank you. It's my pleasure. See you next. Thank you. Take care. Bye.